Have you ever felt like you had everything but still felt lost? That's exactly what Mukesh experienced in his younger years. Mukesh Bajaj once felt lost despite having an ideal life filled with love, freedom and opportunities. His breakthrough came when he discovered the power of serving, leading him to identify his core values and finding purpose helping others. Now, his mission is to guide 15,100 people, and we will come back to this number in the interview to achieve financial freedom and fulfillment, a journey we will explore today. Welcome to another episode of our Founders Podcast, everyone. I'm your host, and this is a show where I interview proven founders and industry experts who share their stories, strategies, and insights to help you build, launch, and grow your business. Today, in this episode, we will be talking with Mukesh. So I hope you enjoy the show. Hi, Mukesh. Welcome to the show. Hi, Ash. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you for the honor. Great stuff. Do you have a favorite quote, something that inspires or motivates you that you would like to share with our audience? Yeah, there are many. I would like to share uh, the one quote I remember from John Scully's um, quote, which he, say, he said, the future belongs to those who see possibilities before they become obvious. So I, I love that. Uh, I love that quote. That inspires me a lot. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. And I can, I can totally, totally see that when it comes to, I guess, Steve Jobs, because he looked at the future. Dr. Sinclair, who is doing the research upon, you know, reverse aging, I guess, Elon Musk at some level. <laughs> Bill Gates. <laughs> yeah, How can we forget Bill Gates? Yeah. How can we forget Bill Gates? Great. So, so Mukesh, tell us about your story. Tell us about, um, you know, how did you start it? You know, where did the story begins? Uh, what bring you to, to the place where you have started thinking about helping others? So I'll take you my personal story, you know, take you to the very start. Like I was born in, in a in a very small town in India, my my family, my my father, my mom, they very loved loved me, very supportive. My dad was a franchisee of a of a logistics company, very successful logistics company. And uh, uh, but one day, the franchisor brother had a had a fight. So and they decided to shut down the business. So that day, then my my family, my father was uh, left with no business, no income. Then one of my uncle then suggested, okay, why shouldn't we start our own logistics company? And that's what they did. Uh, mm. but, but they didn't realize that this this the company and the French like you know replacing that that company means that this company had uh, needed different mindset, different skill set, and the capitals which my dad didn't have at that time. And uh, uh, this company had more overheads than the previous one. So my dad sometime. Um, you know, were behind uh, paying wages some months, and uh, he had to borrow from his 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 friends, his his, his relatives, to keep the business going. Um, and uh, and that's I, I could see that, that my father was stuck. He couldn't see any path. That pushed my mom into a mindset of scarcity and, and anxiety. And mm -hmm. that was a reflection how she was brought up with her seven sisters. And uh, and I couldn't do much that time because I was also working as a lost young man. So one of my friends then encouraged me to come to Australia for the study. And and uh, needless to say, my family had financial challenges, no savings. So so they decided to mortgage their home. And I, I came to Australia for study. I worked in restaurants to pay the bills. And... Uh, after completing my master's in accounting and CPA, I started my own accounting company. And, and I, uh, um, I wanted to crack these three problems that were existing in the, in, the, in the industry that time. Number one was that as a small business, uh, there was a high failure rate of small and medium businesses. Um, and, uh, and, the, and the business owners wouldn't have a you know, cash flow or, or the uh, you know, to fund their lifestyle when they retire. And number three, accountants were focusing more on compliance and reporting rather than helping them, um, you know, uh, create, helping business owners create uh, more profitable or sustainable business. 
So that's what uh, uh, I saw. And when I was working with a client, I the clients connected with me because I, I felt their pain because there was this uncertainty um, I found very similar to what I witnessed with my mom and dad and with the client. So this way, few years um, that we were growing, we hired more staff. And uh, so that means we, our overheads also increased that time. And mm. then uh, what would I do? Um, uh, sometime I would look at, you know, sign up new client and work on that. And then I'll miss the focus on the bigger purpose. So I was, you know, in between my present and future, present and future. You I were juggling between them. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't that And this is where I, one day I stopped for a moment to see, um, to reflect on my journey. And then I saw that my mom, you know, didn't value herself because how she was lived in that environment of scarcity and anxiety. My dad couldn't achieve that financial freedom from the from the business. He he struggled like he, he did he did um, business or life, but but he he couldn't enjoy that. Um, mm. And that's what I found that I was going into the same circle which I didn't want to be in for for myself, for my wife, for my son at two years old that time, and for my mom and dad. I didn't want to be in that that circle. So I. Uh, I decided to take a massive action that day. And then I handpicked my two of my team members. We locked ourselves into a conference room. And then we, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday to Saturday, for three months in a row, we just talked about it, brainstormed about it, that who we are, what do you want to do, what's our, you know. So by doing this, uh, our those whiteboard scribbles became our value system. And uh, and that was the most intense process that I've ever been personally or professionally. And after that, then by reading books, hundreds of podcasts, listening and uh, um, and learning from the thought leaders around the globe, I I found this simple word which was serving. And I kept asking myself that what serving meant for me. And then I you know by then during one challenging time, I got this breakthrough. I found out that I need to find my core values and the purpose. Mm. And once I found that, everything began to change. I found that uh, that my feeling of being lost or stuck went away. The path became clearer. My decision that, you know, were now aligned with myself. And in this realization, I found that my fulfillment is in fulfilling other people's lives in getting them unstuck, in serving others. Because I saw that my father, how he was stuck. And I now, um, I, I, whenever I feel I see someone in my life, I just want to, uh, you know, when, when I see them now being fulfilled through business, through personal life, and that's what fulfills me. So this is how this uh, seven steps came in to the life that uh, helps me now. Uh, that feeling that I'm I'm do not feel stuck or lost anymore. I have something that I I hold on to. I work with that, and which I've been using now for for last uh, seven years with my team, my family, my family. Yeah. Got it. Got it. And and that's very deep, uh, Mukesh, because I've been reading this um, a book uh, recently, and I found out that. Once you have $350 million in your account, there's nothing you can do more making more money having the same amount. So for example, let's say if you have a billion dollar in your account and if you have a $350 million account, both person personas will be able to do exactly the same things at the extent of whatever you can do in the world, right? There's nothing else you can do, uh, you know, which is not, you know, uh, in terms of affordability or reach or, or connecting with people. Um, so there is a there is a place, there is a stage you can reach in your life where you need to have a tangible reason, a relevant reason, which is not tangible, if you're getting my point. Like 
you figured out in three months sitting with your colleagues in a conference room, whiteboarding, brainstorming, that what are your values? And that brought you to the place where you figured out, okay, I have to help other people, right? Now, I don't know if you have heard about this guy called Simon Squibb. Have you heard about him or no? So he yeah. runs a bank called Help a Bank. Very okay. big entrepreneur. He has started multiple startups, multi-million dollar exits he had. What he did is in London, he bought a staircase. Mm -hmm. And that that is a very weird sentence I'm using on on you know on this podcast. Mm -hmm. The staircase, staircase doesn't connect with any flats. The staircase mm -hmm. doesn't have anything, just mm -hmm. a simple staircase with a lift in there. That's mm -hmm. all. You can imagine buying a property in London is super expensive. But nobody was buying that staircase because planning permissions in UK is so hard to get that you cannot convert that land into anything else, first of all. Mm -hmm. And second, why would you want to spend 30, 40, 50 grand on a staircase and do nothing with it, right? what this guy did was he bought that staircase and he put you know these ring bells you know the ring company which has yeah. a camera and you press the ring he put that ring in there and he connected that ring to his social media where he has tens of millions of followers straight mm -hmm. away yeah so, and how he he's helping others you go to this stairs ring the bell yeah. and you have 60 seconds to pitch your idea. Oh. And it goes straight away in front of millions of people who is following him online. Mm -hmm. And that way it is helping so many people to get investment that you cannot imagine. So, that, you know, it's not just the money you yeah. can help other people. It's the way, the ideas, the, the passion you have to help others, right? That's so cool. I was, I, my mind was blown when I heard about it. And, and that's why I love entrepreneurs people like you who, who want to help other people. So let's talk about this, this book of yours. Where did you got the inspiration to write this book? I mean, you have already told us the background story about it, but let's uh, dig deeper about the exact, you know, epiphany when you had that, I want to write this book. And then let's cover the seven step, step by step, I guess. Yeah. Um, see, I've been working on this system for the last uh, seven years. So in 2017, um, I would say that the time when I when this conference room uh, time happened, and uh, then for five years without any intention of writing a book, we were just working on the system. Or something like I wanted to design something for me so that I'm not stuck. And then it expanded to now working with the team. It was uh, I, it was very helpful for me so I could give them the direction. Now as a CEO. It's easy that you go to the team and then you can share a, a, a system where they can make their own decision, where they can see, how do I make a decision? This is how I make a decision. This is how I will do if, if I'm at your place. So you can, you know, use that system to, to make your own decisions. And, and this way, then I expanded it to my family, my, my uh, you know, with clients. And then uh, last couple of years, I've been actively then working on bringing the book into life. Because when you look at the book, Everyone talks about, even even the seasoned writer, they say that writing a book is is difficult, it's a challenge, right? And and I did, I knew about this, so I can't complain that you know, when I was writing that. However, also I um, I understand, and I've you know I've heard that that the writer also mentioned that it's even it's challenging, but it's incredibly fulfilling that the learning. You, you do, you know, you improve on what you reflect on, right? So I could see, even though I had a system, but while writing the book, it gave me so much clarity um, that now I have to share it with the people. So it had to be to that level that how would uh, it be perceived? It has to be a mix of stories as well as um, the concepts. I didn't want to uh, make it as a textbook. So it, there's a lot of stories, a lot of my personal stories, parables, and then concepts so that, uh, you know, as a small business owner, as a professional, uh, you can use it. So this is how the book, um, uh, book came up. And from a seven steps, now I could 
share seven steps in two different ways because seven steps is a is a system which you can use it in any time in any situation however mm. for your audience uh, because i've you know been uh, as an accounting company as a cpa so i help business owners launch the businesses every day so i'll use the system as an example that how would you use the system when you are launching a business for example so i'll take that yeah. uh, yeah so that'll be more yeah. um, uh, useful for the Brilliant. audience yeah so when you look at the seven steps the very first step is about uh, uh, celebrate and be grateful you know we, when we start the business people come from employment or sometimes you want to be you know part time employment side um, as a side whatever the situation is my first point is write down seven things you're grateful for in your current situation doesn't matter what your situation is what are those seven things you are grateful for that's the first step um second step is then aligning your fulfillment vision so what does it mean is fulfillment vision is a there are 10 elements in the fulfillment vision but the central element is a purpose you got to find out the the purpose of the of the business see when we talk about the life you talk about the life's purpose in this case we talking about the business as one system so we talking about what is the purpose of business why are we starting the business what do what do we want to achieve with that right what's the big picture right so that's we start with and then i talk about all the other nine elements basically which are uh, activity behavior habits beliefs goals number 6 values character um uh, values character and uh, uh, purpose principles and why these are the 10 elements so you align all of the nine elements to the purpose for example you breaking your goals into which align with the purpose then you have activities habits and behavior aligned with your goals so when everything is aligned then there is no less conflict so the decision making is lot easier for example right so that's the step two. step 3 is uh, knowing your win so basically in step 3 we go deep into understanding why do you want to start the business and i break down into the six um, needs six elements six needs for example the first one is the brand what do you want to be remembered for in this business what the business would be uh, remembered for um what kind of a legacy what reputation what kind of uh, the brand you want it's not just a logo it's about what's behind that you know what's the purpose uh second is the money you know how much money we talking here he we talking here 200000 dollar 2 million 200 million we have to be clear because the mindset is different when you are working uh, you know is it 200000 dollar business or 20 million business or 200 million dollar business so knowing that number 3 is then uh, time like is it a is it a 24 hour business is it a 7 day business is it a 365 days business or what kind of business that is or is it just a freelance monday to friday depending on so knowing that is very important from the business owner perspective the fourth one is skill what kind of a skill do you want to practice where do you want to go deep is it a technology is it accounting is it a marketing or what what skill are you passionate about that you want to go deep 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 because the environment is changing so fast now you want to be a specialist in one skill that you want to practice um number 5 is the health again knowing your physical and mental health which business would you like to be in which one gives you more energy which one is suiting to your physical health for example and your client's physical health number 6 is experience what kind of experiences you want to create not just money it's what kind of experiences what what do you want to do what do you want to you know um uh, like when you go to the work in the business with the team with the client what kind of experiences you want to collect the memories so that's um the six points but when we nail this six point then you pretty much know what kind of business is good for you not what other people are doing what do you want to do right that's number 3 number 4 then knowing the client's way so now you understand what you want then you understand what market needs who is your ideal client right even then you go deep on that who are your investors if you have who are your client of clients sometimes you know you have a b2b and then you understand what are their clients for example like right? 
you understand that as well. You understand why competitors are there, why suppliers are there, why are the employees in that industry. So you understand even go deep, depending on again, is it $200,000 business or $200 million business? The more, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of a, uh, the bigger the risk, bigger the impact, you, you go more deep. It's just like cost benefit analysis perspective, right? Number five is that you create win-win solution. Means now you understand your need, you understand the business owner, uh, sorry, client's need. Now you create solutions. Like for example, you go to the vibrancy studies. You know, what is it? How many product you have to sell? How many clients you have to have? What does your five year look like? What does three year look like? Where's the break even? All those things we talk about, profit and loss forecast, balance sheet forecast, we do that. We understand what kind of a structure do you need? Is it a partnership? Is it a sole trader? Is it a is it a big company? All those things, right? We, we talk about that. And then step by step, we, we cover insurances, um, IP, and all those things. We go, you know, that this is the, um, then you look at uh, what's your minimum viable product? What are your product services menu? What is the compelling offer? What funding uh, plan do you have if you need any? So once this is agreed, that's the win-win solution. Now that's agreed. Number six is then deliver with excellence. Now you understand what a prototype look like, what you want to do, what pricing, all those things you've figured it out, right? You've got the blueprint now. Now the time is to deliver. Now you don't just go all the time, you know, you just have to focus now. This is what you want. Now you go and deliver by having that goal in mind, which we talked about previously, purpose and goals. You pick up one goal from here. Then you look at what lead basis you have, which came from the 4DX, uh, Sean, uh, Sean Covey's book, 4DX, these this four disciplines. So you look at the lead measures that what uh, activities do you need to do that will move the needle towards the goal? You know, so we find out that. Then we look at the scorecards. What scorecard would, would you know that you you measure and you look at those scorecards, you know that you're winning or, or losing. You're getting to the, you know, moving the needle or not. And having the accountability meetings, whether it's a weekly, quarterly, monthly, um, whatever that frequency you choose, depending on your size of business. So you can see then in this meeting, you celebrate your last week's win or last month's win. And then you look at what are the commitments for the next period and you celebrate wins. And number seven is then achieve with joy, which is then we uh, recommend taking feedback, giving feedback to each other, um, depending on whether you are supplier or client. And uh, to the team, you celebrate the achievements and reflect on the learnings. So this is step by step from one to seven. When you complete and do this exercise ongoing basis, you will have a business which you are not, um, you know, which you are fulfilled, which your team knows the clear purpose. You, uh, like everyone on board. And, and as a business owner, you're not scared of having team around or, or thinking big, all those things you can do. And everyone is clear on the direction, one system, and they can choose how they want to, you know, go deep on that, for example. They can solve any problem uh, uh, so through, through that system and make their own decisions on that, yeah. So do you, like, uh, so what I've learned that, these seven steps have multiple elements in each stage, right? As you explained, do you like provide some kind of service? Like, as you say that you're a financial freedom and fulfillment coach does like big or small SMB companies come to you to figure out what they want to do. And then you go to them and then do this kind of workshops. And if you do, then how do you do it? Like, for example, if we take a, a lot of our listeners are uh, SaaS founder software as a service, right? Um, whenever, whenever they start building something or they have an idea, what they think is like, okay, let's build it quickly because now you can build quickly in this AI world, and then you know figure out the product market fit. They never talk about okay, what is the purpose? Well, why we are doing it? Or what's the financial part or things like that? And that's why I got interested when you were explaining like, okay, do we really have to ask ourselves this question? Because this is a fast paced world, isn't it? And I think we do. 
because what if I'm making tens of thousands of dollars, but I'm not happy inside, right? Uh, I don't feel like, oh, I'm just doing it. Like, you know, there are several entrepreneurs who just sell things on eBay. Like they just copy paste something which somebody's selling in states and they start selling it in Europe. They make money, but it's just a hassle. It's not their heart in that business, if you know what I mean. So what is the practice what 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 is your practice in order to like host these workshops with these organizations where you have or maybe i can ask you a different question maybe you can say uh, you, you can share like can you share a compelling case study that highlights how uh, an organization leveraged your advice your coaching to achieve success see i give you a different scenarios. One, I give you very, one of the moment, which I would say proudest moment or, or biggest one. It's not on the launch, but I, I'll share this one. And then I show you, I show you the launch study as well. So this yeah. one, my, one of my client, the very new client, and she was, she's good with, like she's running good business from last 20 years. She's got, she knows in and out of the industry, but she was feeling like stuck, unfulfilled. Like she was in routine, she was not enjoying the business. And, and she was like, wanted to quit, close the doors. And when I shared this, this process and system with her, and, and we talked about um, that, that life, that, you know, that she can add so much value to the client, existing client, and to the community. And, and for her, it will be a regret if she closes the door now. And when we went through the step-by-step -step process talking about, okay, why, let's start talking about why are you grateful, first of all. Forget about it. We will, we'll, we'll figure it out whether we have to close or shut down. We'll talk about that. But went to the step-by-step. -step, then we say, yeah, that's good. I, I have team. I have you know money coming in. I know the industry, blah, blah, blah. We, we covered all those points. Then we looked at what does she want to do? Right. So we looked at the in that case, I went more deep. I went on that even personal level as well, because right now I shared the seven, uh, the needs, six needs into the uh, only business perspective. But if you if you look at uh, my framework is 30 sales framework, which means six times five. So six of those needs, when you when you look at across your yourself, your um, family, your business, employment, a career, and number four is your friends and community. Number five is your spiritual, most spiritual. The whole framework is 30 cells, right? And uh, six needs times five, simple, you know, that 30. So then we looked at, okay, what are her hobbies? What she missing out? Why is she burn out? All those things, we talked about that. And then we finally, uh, long story short, we finally, she was, she was, she found that what she wanted to do and uh, she found then a, another partner so that was the solution that so that she doesn't need to close the door just take a one step back have one partner in there so that she can take some time off she can give the direction all those things so this way she can go so that's how when she decided that now i don't want to now close the door and i i want to be here i will take breaks from here and i'll also do my uh, extra hobbies which is a marine and also so this way and that was the proudest moment. Like you, you know, she's caught then, like she knows a lot of, uh, uh, I would say that uh, her expertise in the industry. And she's a lawyer basically. So she's a lawyer and she understood, like she's, she's 20 years in that industry, attention to detail. So I, I, I was really, really, like, as you can see, I was really, really proud of her first and then myself that we, we had this moment where we talked about that. And so that's one story. Um, regarding launching the business, I have multiple stories where people say, oh, why shouldn't I just start and, and make it happen? Then this is these stories that um, help them understand that I don't want you to, to just feel like my father, like like this one of my clients, this client I'm talking about. But after a few years, then you, you get you feel like you're lost and stuck and you're not achieving something. Like when we look at the business, it's a long term. 
even you may sell it um, after a few years whenever you want it but but this business will will sustain long term someone else will take it then someone else will take it so when we starting it's not just a uh, we have to do it just you know short term and and you don't have time it's it's a business it's a life you know as you see business will business work and career when you look at we spend years in in studying from university schools and college so that one day we could use our skills to help our clients and this is why we take an employment or a business the same thing but you're solving someone's problem right so it's not that brings you the fulfillment because this is the one thing you wanted to do in your life this is why you did years of you know uh, studying and 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 work experience and ex- so much right? right so now that yes. and we go step by step which i shared earlier we go once and I, i i'm with them um you know i understand when you start you you feel like i'm alone and this is why i'm here we work through them i help them create the plan i help them understand the things and then they can see the value there because this document then is a live document which they can keep updating keep updating if your client avatar changes go back change the client avatar if your service menu changes go back change the menu it's a blueprint it's a live blueprint and hmm. and this so way saying, yeah. saying that who is your icp then who is your IC, uh, ideal customer persona uh, my customer is small business who is mm-hmm. well, who's starting and up to ideal client is up to 5 million dollar i want to get people from 0 to 5 million dollar fast so that then they have resources so that they can pick up then what the big purpose they want to achieve from there but that's where my um you know my main uh, audience is i want to be with them help them you know these people are more when you look at in australia 93% businesses uh, are even under 2 million dollar turnover 93% okay it's it's a, it's a huge number that where uh, the people are like myself like you know i want to be with them and and i want to i want to just i get excited i get fulfilled when when then they say oh wow i'm i'm doing something and which is which is i'm enjoying as well it's not just i'm here for for just the just the money i said money the second when i talk about the brand the first one brand means the values and purpose why you starting and the money is the second one and uh, uh, but it's very important and uh, so so yeah so those are the people who i love working with great great and and i know uh, we have to jump on our lightning round but i have lots of questions right now yeah. so you know you have so much deep understanding of how the thought process of a of a business owner works which i can see you know when you talk because you have helped so many people so throughout your journey um and experience there must have been some valuable lessons learned and if you don't mind like sharing could you reflect on your experience that tell us about one mistake or a setback that you encountered along the way and then you, you know you consider not consider as a regret but a, but a lessons learned you know and what advice would you give our listeners based on that experience see i give you a very um, a different mindset now what i've, I've, I've achieved from my all the mistakes so my my i've been in my life i've been failure all the time so failure is nothing new to me nothing new so um even having this conflict within myself i've been on scarcity mindset been jealous anxious that kind of a person and with that now seven steps it helps me to to be self aware and have that abundance mindset and using those um habits like for example i i'm fan of uh, stephen covey's uh, uh, seek to understand before seeking to be understood 
so much of these you know books podcasts thought leaders have, have changed me um from that headless chicken to a fulfilled now human being i would say um and i share you the biggest thing that i was in between um always been in conflict whether should i just focus here or go that way because i had this mission that 15100 people achieve financial freedom and a fulfilled life even since 2017 so like seven years i've been this that this that so now having this system it helps me that when i go when i see that i'm off track but now i know i'm off track and this helps me come back faster come back faster like for example if you take oh we have a 10000 uh, steps uh, kind of a goal and few days we do walk 10 step 10000 steps and then then something happens kid gets sick i get sick weather happens this happens and then we go off track then we didn't do for a week but now what i see it's okay it's okay we don't worry about that we start again start again get back fast get back fast on that that uh, the track you you know the track the, the the purpose you 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 created the goal you created come back fast now i'm able to come back fast i'm able to so this is what i would say has been the best thing in my life that i'm able to come back fast knowing where i want to go what i want to do sticking to that purpose and then when i go off track i want to come back fast i want to come back fast so yeah if that yeah just like just like um i think this was one of the quotes from um from the book uh, uh from uh beaver guy it's like fail fast and learn fast something something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. fail fast learn fast great great cool so okay we um thanks for that we should wrap up now we going to go into um lightning round i've got six quick fire questions for you so you yeah. can answer them as quickly as possible great number 1 what are the top 3 strategies you have to consider before starting a business um see first is i would go step by step process it's a seven step system that's very important second thing is uh, part of that um, is a win win solution right so so win win solution means you create those three um kind of solutions then you choose uh, then you compare those solutions with your own kpi which we talked about earlier that why are you starting so we we create the kpis from there like brand money time skill health and experience very high level kpis then you see which solution will give the best outcome based on all those six elements that's a fulfilling outcome not just money not just time not just health it's all six which one gives you the you know uh, and then we pick and choose and then we take the agreement on if it's a talk it to a client to, to team and once it's agreed then we move on to the delivery part so that will be my uh, strategy to, to go on with so to any uh, decision yeah okay what book would you recommend to our audience and why i would recommend two books number one is um, my uh, the legend stephen covey's seven habits oh, i love that book and uh, i learned a lot 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 from there and second book will be uh, my book seven steps to fulfilled life so so yeah so these two books are very very <laughs> favorite for me definitely definitely that's a good one uh, what's one attribute or characteristic in your mind of a successful founder uh there's so many but i'll pick resilience because with the yeah. founder you fail i say you fail so many times if we don't have the resilience to to come back to the track to the come back to the track that then you know what we do as a founder won't never happen you know because we fail so many times so many times and resilience is one one attribute that that i think will be the, the uh, my favorite one yeah okay what's your favorite personal productivity tool or habit um seven self fulfillment system is my personal very favorite one 
<laughs> if I have game only one, so I'll, I'll just that first, now my habit is I want to just and I use it for every time. Even you want to, uh, especially when you're making a, a, a decision which is uh, which is important decision. Yeah. Got it. Got it. What's a new or a crazy business idea you would love to pursue if you had time? I'll uh, see if I had time. And as well as um, even I'm resourceful, but but again has time so that we can find more resources. I would love to fast track my my reason and my purpose so that I could achieve fifteen thousand one hundred before I die. So you know, even I won't mind if I die tomorrow. At least I'll be happy that I was walking on that path. Uh, but if I have more resources, more people around me, and and this is why I'm I'm now writing a book. I'm sharing this so that more people we we connect with. Then I, this is my purpose. I will be able to achieve in my lifetime, for example. So, yeah, that will be my answer. That I will be able to fast track <laughs> if you, uh, if I had the time and money. Yes. Cool. And last but not least, what's an interesting fun fact about you that most people don't know? Um, I'm a very open book, but still, uh, from my from my this book, people will know that I love parables and stories i love storytelling and you you asked me earlier that uh, from a learning perspective now with with this writing this book and preparing for those stories in the book what i've learned one thing which is, which is again a very very uh, major breakthrough for me when i saw that when we fail when we have a low time that is also very important. Articulating that load time is very important because when you're sharing your story, which I'm doing now, that becomes very important because if you do not have that challenge or low, there's no story. Every story will have high, low, trigger, high. You know, that's a story. If you do not have a low, if you never fail, there's no story. And every life has a story. It means that we all fail. We all have challenges. It just now, uh, when you write a book, we just learn that how to write. I, I was not, a, as I say, I, I'm not a born writer. I'm not born anything. I'm learning everything as we go, focusing on the bigger purpose. And I just focus on the purpose and the rest things. I, I just fill it. You know, I just fill it. I just fill it. And, and then uh, community, the environment, team, everyone supports me. To, to make this happen that, that this is my you know my story <laughs> love okay. the stories, well, yeah. Mikesh, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your st uh, story unpacking uh, you know last few years of building this business as well as writing your book uh, if people want to check out your book or reach out to you what's the best way to do it um uh, they can visit my website uh, which uh, is vikeshbajaj.com.au and vikeshbajaj.com and they can uh, they'll find lots of resources as I'm now um, uh, and sharing um, as we speak and also for your audience specifically if if they send me a, a message on Instagram saying odd circle then I would send them a surprise I'll send them personally so yeah so that's how you know, your audience can connect with me. Yeah. Awesome. That would be great. Mikesh, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your inspiring journey and impactful work you're doing. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on Founders Podcast. Thank you, Ashley. Your questions were very thoughtful. I, I really enjoyed it. I don't know how much time it took, but every minute I just enjoyed it. Thank you very much. And uh, I would love to catch up again as we both progress here. Thank you. Thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Founders Podcast. I hope you found our conversation with Mukesh insightful and inspiring. If you are a founder or industry expert interested in sharing your story on our podcast, please don't hesitate to simply contact me. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to go to mukeshbajaj.com and mukeshbajaj.com.au. Make sure to message him on Instagram to get your surprise gift. Stay inspired, stay motivated, and keep building.